AC coupled inverters, DC coupled inverters. You've probably seen loads about them, but might not quite understand what they are, what they do and how they all work. This video today is a special request from a customer that simply didn't understand the difference. Today, I'm not just going to be describing the difference between the various different types of inverters. I've got them here on a live product demonstration so I can break down everything that you need to know so you're asking all the right questions to your installers. Let's go. So firstly, before we go into the nitty gritty of what AC coupled and DC coupled means is and works, I just wanted to clarify what the word coupling means. It effectively is how the battery is attached to your home via the inverter. So first up is AC coupled. Let me start by breaking this down a little bit. We're gonna start with just battery only. Now AC coupled can work alongside solar. I'll break that down just in a second, but we're just gonna keep it simple to start with and then we'll start adding things to it uh, so that you have a full uh, understanding of everything. So AC coupled. An AC coupled inverter is this product that I have behind me. It effectively has no ability for solar to input into it in its simplest form. Now there are some hybrid inverters that can be set up as AC coupled, so that can add a bit of confusion, but we'll just deal with a simple AC coupled inverter all by itself. This one behind me has absolutely no solar input at all. So what does it do and how does it work? You have the inverter and you have the battery. Essentially, the inverter is there, if you don't have solar or any other form of generation, to take off-peak energy. So let's say you're in an EV car rate or you have a heat pump rate, charge the battery on those off-peak rates, store the energy. Then when your on-peak rate kicks in, it takes the energy from the battery and delivers it into your home. So if you're having a battery-only installation, this is gonna be your method of installation. The inverter is capable of tracking what your home is doing in real time. So as you turn on the kettle, the DC energy, which is stored in your battery, can be converted to AC, hence the name AC coupled, to be able to deliver that demand to your home in real time. As the kettle turns off, the demand from that battery then stops and the energy is then retained in the battery again until you turn something else on. The idea being that you could move your on-peak rate if you've just got a flat rate to an off-peak energy or with certain models of AC coupled inverter if you're prone to blackouts if you're prone to power cuts then effectively you could get that energy from the battery in the event of a power cut and deliver that into your home for house backup without the need of solar. Now this type of inverter is perfect for those people, let's say you have a stone roof or your roof isn't facing a preferential angle or you don't like the look and appearance of aesthetics of solar panels, then effectively you could go for a battery only installation and still make great savings. So we're still talking about AC couple battery systems. We've discussed about it as a battery storage all by itself but it is also possible to install an AC couple battery system alongside solar system so with a traditional solar system let's say you've got a feed-in tariff system for example or you've just decided i didn't have the budget right now all i wanted to do was just install solar panels maybe you bought a house with just solar panels you'll probably have one of these this is called a string inverter now it might not be specifically this brand but they all function roughly in the same way they are available in different sizes based upon the number of solar panels you have but let's just deal with it as we've got it here. This string inverter takes the DC current, which is what this solar panel generates, and converts it into AC current. DC current being a flat waveform, alternating current being an alternating waveform that we use to boil a kettle. So it takes it from the non-functioning electric that we can't use in our home to the functioning electric that we can use in our home. So we've got DC energy converted it to AC. So at this point, let's say this was fitted all by itself, you would have the benefit of either being able to use it as it's being generated on a sunny day like today, but if there's any excess, that would automatically be exported out to the grid. So this is where an AC coupled battery comes in, and you'll see there'll be two inverters. Your AC coupled battery if you're not using that energy inside of your home, can essentially look for this energy and store it in your battery. So not only with an AC coupled battery do you get the benefit of being able to charge on off-peak rates, 
but you can also store the solar energy in real time. Now, it does this using what's called a current tracking clamp. So effectively, your AC coupled inverter tracks what the solar system is doing, tracks what your house is doing, and then as you change the load in the house, so as you turn that kettle on, if there's one kilowatt of solar being generated and your kettle's running at two kilowatts, then the extra kilowatt will come from your battery so you're not drawing anything in from the grid. So one of the downsides to this particular setup, and sometimes you might not have a choice, particularly if you're on, say, a feed-in tariff system, you would want it set up this way to maintain your all-important feed-in tariff payments. But one of the downsides is the inefficiency of this style of system. If you think about it, DC gets converted to AC, the current we use. It then has to go back through this conversion process, goes from AC back to DC, AC coupled, and then goes from DC back to AC to be drawn out of the battery into your home load. And in the process, typically speaking, I appreciate different inverters will run at different efficiency levels, you'll lose about 10% of the energy that's generated on a solar panel in this conversion process. Don't worry though, AC coupled inverters are really intelligent. The best method is for the solar to come via the solar panels via the string inverter and be delivered straight into your home. If it can do this, your battery will stand back and allow that to happen. It'll only scoop up the excess working as efficiently as it possibly can. I just wanted to briefly cap off micro inverters or AC panels as other people may well know them and how they're gonna work and operate. So an AC panel is essentially a micro inverter that's been pre-glued to the back of a solar panel. The solar panel itself still generates in DC current. It's just converted at panel level. So essentially a small version of this string inverter is either glued or retrospectively attached to the back of your solar panel. And at panel level, it converts DC to AC current the AC coupled inverter would just work in exactly the same way. The difference being you just have multiple small little mini inverters on each panel, micro inverters, instead of having one big string inverter like I've got to the side of me here. So who are these systems best suited towards? So an AC coupled, as I mentioned before, with battery all by itself, is suited to those people that simply can't have solar panels or can't have it right now. Or if you're selling your home and think, I really want to make this move, but I know in about five years time, I'm thinking of moving. It's very hard to move solar panels with you. It's often cost prohibitive, but if you had an AC coupled inverter, you could essentially take this, scoop it up and install it at your next home whilst leaving this equipment still on your roof and in your attic, for example. The other use case would be, as I mentioned before, someone who already has a solar system, a feed-in tariff system, or just simply a standard string system. Maybe you've moved into a new build and they've installed solar panels without battery storage. This kit could effectively be up in the attic and on the roof, and this kit here could go in your garage and it will work absolutely fine. So next, let's break down DC coupled inverters and battery storage and how that works and operates. Now these two inverters stood here, string inverter and hybrid DC coupled inverter look very, very similar. They share a very similar chassis, but they do very different jobs. So the string inverter has no ability to have battery storage and it has no EPS output, emergency power supply, which relies upon battery storage, but it does still have a solar input. You'll notice one of the difference being the fact that it has no battery sign on the base and the number of inputs on the base of the inverter are significantly different. So that when I move this across, you understand that I'm talking about a completely different product. Now let's move this to one side and let's get cracking on with DC coupled. So, DC coupled, also known as hybrid systems. Now, I just want to vet this slightly in that there are a couple of systems like Victron off-grid uh, that may well have similar phraseology as DC coupled. So for those people watching this, this is the majority of inverters available at the majority of major wholesalers. This will cap off 95% of DC coupled inverters. There are a couple of exceptions to the rule. So let's start breaking down what a DC coupled inverter does. So if you remember earlier on, I had a string inverter and an AC coupled inverter next to me. This is basically those two combined. Solar is generated in DC, 
This is wired directly in DC to the bottom of the inverter. The inverter then makes a suitable decision. It either says there's a load in the home, kettles on, we have enough solar generation and I can meet it, or if there's an excess, that DC generation voltage is stepped down and goes straight into the battery. As you remember before, we went through a few different conversion cycles, DC to AC, AC to DC, DC back to AC, and it was really confusing. A hybrid inverter simply has one step to storage, which is converting it from higher voltage DC to a lower voltage DC current. It's significantly more efficient. Then when you put your kettle on, this is drawn up from demand from the battery, goes via the inverter to push out to your kettle load. Now what it can also do in the same way your AC coupled operates is by off-peak energy, take it from the grid and store that into your battery. So effectively, it does exactly the same job as a string inverter and AC coupled inverter does, but just combined. Now, if you're on a bit of a budget and you're in the design process and you're thinking, oh, I'm not too sure whether I should just put a string only inverter, a thing to know about a hybrid inverter is you can set it up as a string inverter without batteries to start off with, then when you're ready for battery storage, you can add them in at a later date. So if you're thinking, it's something that I want to be ready for, but I'm not ready for right now, you can add the batteries on at a later date. It works the same with solar panels and loads of people don't realize this. You can install a DC coupled hybrid inverter with battery storage, but no solar input at the outset. At a later date, let's say you've now built your extension, you could then come and wire that in at a later point in time. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds picking an inverter like this because you can set it up as battery only, string in only, or as a DC coupled hybrid system where you're getting the benefit of both. So let's just briefly talk about cost because you might be thinking, well, this will be a bit more expensive. Now, if you're thinking of solar only, and as I mentioned, thinking of pivoting to battery at a later date, this will be slightly more expensive up front. A hybrid inverter is normally about double the price of a standard string inverter. It's also a little bit more complicated to set up because we need to wire the battery in. Uh, we need to um, connect the solar in as well, test and inspect those aspects at the same time. So there's a little bit more work involved in setting a hybrid inverter up. But if you're thinking of having solar panels at a later date, or if you're thinking of having batteries at a later date, or you're having them both done at the same time, then this will probably make way more sense when you get to the bottom line in terms of your return on investment. So the other option you can get is an inverter and battery storage system called an all-in-one. Now, there are a few key brands, Powerwall 3 by Tesla Energy. You've got Sig Energy, and they've got their all-in-one unit with expandable batteries. And we've also got the Give Energy all-in-one and Anchor Solics, all of which are all-in-ones. You're now aware what an AC-coupled and DC-coupled inverters are. So a Powerwall 3, for example, can be both AC coupled and DC coupled and hybrid all in one unit. And effectively the all in one unit is just this and this packaged into one casing. Or you've got the other, which is a Give Energy all in one that has no ability to be able to have a solar input. So it's very like the inverter I showed you at the outset, except for there's more battery storage and it's a bigger inverter. You would normally pick an all in one unit when you've got bigger loads. Things like a heat pump, for example, you have a bigger inverter and more battery storage. But the fundamental concept of this versus an all-in-one unit is exactly the same. So if you're interested in having battery storage and you want to have a bit more of a deep dive, I'm actually doing a battery only video shortly on the channel. Feel free to give us a follow and you'll be notified early. So I've brought all the products all back together again now in one shot so I can show you which one will probably be right for you. So let's start with battery only. If you've got absolutely no intention of having solar panels in the future, my suggestion is go for an AC coupled inverter and battery storage like here or an all-in-one AC coupled unit. If you've got an existing solar system, string inverter and solar panels, for example, a feed-in tariff system, my suggestion would also be an AC coupled battery storage system. If you're starting from scratch, my suggestion would be the DC coupled hybrid inverter because you can set it up with battery only at the outset and have no solar and come back to it later. You can set it up with solar panels only and come back to the battery later. 
or you can set it up with both solar panels and battery at the outset and go for the treble. Thanks so much for watching today.